This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876-309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mmm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking your time out to watch this video in particular. But let me give you an update on a channel called Sport City. Yes, Sports City. It is a channel dedicated to everything related to Jamaican sports. Football, cricket, athletics, netball, rugby league, rugby union, tennis, lacrosse, swimming, you name it, we got it on Sports City. And what is the channel designed to do? It is designed to highlight Jamaican talents across all of those sporting disciplines. If you're a Jamaican and you're playing that sport, then we got you covered on Sport City. So it's quite simple, guys. Hit the subscribe button to Sport City right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Darren Moore, and you're watching Reggae Boys Country. What is this you're looking at? Many have seen it, but knows nothing of its many harmful impacts. It affects your eyes, asthma, muscles, urination, digestion, and much more. What is it? Mold, found in homes, offices, hotels, air conditioning units, and many other places. It's urgent that you call Hygienely now, 876-793-4070 or 876-502-0055. Good evening. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? My name is Simon Preston, and welcome to Reggae Boys Commentary. This is the channel where we come together to discuss everything in relation to Jamaican football. This is your hub for everything Jamaican football related. So let's get right into the, the matter, shall we? If you guys haven't already, you smash the like button. And after you smash the like button, and quite simply, you hit the subscribe button as well. All right, because we're so close, inches away from 16,000 subscribers. Smash that like button right now. Let's see. Come on, guys. Just smash the like button right now. All right? Cool. Now, a big game lies ahead tomorrow, and that is Jamaica against Trinidad and Tobago, the second friendly international. Yep, that's right. This is big in many, many, many instances. Yep. It's a critical one, extremely. You know, and why would I say that in particular? Well, basically, it's the last dress rehearsal ahead of the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. So if there are any opportunities to experiment even more, it has to be tomorrow. If there are any opportunities to fine-tune thing, things, tomorrow is the last day. Because there will be absolutely no margin for error by the time the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship gets going <clears throat> on the weekend so that is what we can say from this standpoint it is critical it is crucial time period now it's a point that should not be dismissed at all there was some concern in relation to where this game should be played as we know <clears throat> prior to the game it was announced that it would be at saint elizabeth technical at four o'clock but as you heard in the <clears throat> post-match interview from Marin Gordon, he said when when I asked him if there'll be another penalty shootout for practice, he said it depends if the game is at Arnett or Stets. So it gave the impression that that decision was still up in the air. But it can it is confirmed now the match against Trinidad and Tobago will be played 
at St. Elizabeth Technical tomorrow, 4 o'clock Jamaica time. Jamaica versus Trinidad and Tobago, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock Jamaica time. That will be the match. All right, guys? So Trinidad and Tobago, let's start with them, shall we? Jamaica recorded their first win over Trinidad and Tobago since 2016 at this level. Now, it has never, ever been easy beating Trinidad. A lot of people will say about Simon in 2015, Jamaica won 5-1. If you watch the game closer, you will see that when Jamaica was 2-1 up, Trinidad were pushing for an equalizer. And the space in between, Jamaica made full use of that space in uh, behind and capitalized on it. And the Trinidadians crumbled. So they made full, full, full use of that opportunity. Trinidad and Tobago's press officer, Sean Fuentes, has confirmed that Rio Cardenas, the Crystal Palace Academy player, is available for selection <clears throat> for the game tomorrow. And coach Sean Cooper says that he will be giving a few minutes to the 14-year-old sensation, Seth Hadid. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure if you guys have been watching the Trinidadian schoolboy football season, but I have. And Seth is <clears throat> special. He could go to Europe tomorrow morning. That's how special Seth Hadid is. That's the, the talent level that I see in that young man. So he said a few minutes. So that right there gives the firm, firm, firm view that he won't be starting the game maybe half an hour, maybe 20 minutes. But Seth Hadid, he's the man to watch. He's the man to watch. And definitely one that the Jamaicans should not be taking lightly at all. Now, you look at the Jamaican side of things. And as you can see on your screen, I have an 11 for the game tomorrow for the Jamaicans. I'll go on with Toyin Lynch in net. Established number one for me. He gets the nod over Joshua Grant, who has also been part of the squad. So, Tewain Lynch over Joshua Grant in goal. Defense. I've gone with Ahir Dixon. Adrian Reed. And Alex Xavier Gooden. Now, you could say, well, there are other options, like Amalek Robinson. Or you might say, what about perhaps utilizing Bolt as a left center half? But no, this is what I've gone with in terms of that back three. Brandon Bent over Bolt at left back. Malachi Molina at right back. One who's heavily tipped for making it into the MLS in 2025. A midfield of Adrian Mahoney and Jordan Mangatal. Now, with these individuals in particular, what I can say is, is quite simple. When you have a midfield too, you do have challenges. And let me put Trinidad and Tobago on the screen here. Look at Trinidad. I'll look like this. The issues that you would have with a midfield three are like this, and I will show you right now. So with a midfield three, you have a 3v2 right here. So Mahoney and Mangatal, they're overloads in these areas. And winning possession against that midfield two will be easier for the Trinidadians. Did it work on Saturday? No, because Mangatal was strong. Mahoney didn't start, but Ronaldo Barrett did. And they were assured. But not every game 
a midfield two can work. But, you know, I like the back three. I really, really like the back three. It offers that solidity. Jamaica will be difficult to break down. Will be difficult to break down. And it's no surprise where you find a lot of games that the Jamaican team has played and it's nil-nil at halftime. I don't think it's any surprise at all that this happens. Brandon, I want him to be more assertive, more assertive to even even underlap and say, hey, Arane, Ashton, Jamani, Nicholas, Malachi, I want him to focus more on the crossing responsibilities. And if he can be accurate with his crosses, then we're cooking with the gas. Brandon does very well with that, that right foot as well. So underlapping will not be an issue for him. Because I know if he finds space in these sorts of areas, he can go for glory. Absolutely, do that. Watson, Ashton Gordon, Jemani Bell. Now let's, let me tell you guys something right here. See Jemani Bell? Jemani Bell has to play every minute for Jamaica in the qualifiers. For Jamaica to go far in this competition, he has to play every minute. When Jamani is on the ball, you know something great is about to happen. You know that something fantastic is going to happen. You know that things are going to happen. You know that you should be at the edge of your seat. That is what we should see. And that is what we should process with Germany on the ball. Nicholas Simmons for his hold up play. Yeah, I think he did a reasonably good job for his hold up play in the first game. Of course, there is a disappointment with a penalty, but that is now behind him. But I see him as a vital member part of the 20. Orion Watson came on and made an instant impact, not only because of the goal, but the number of chance created by the Jamaican team increased exponentially as he came on the field. Ashton Gordon, Atlanta United. I have been I have known this this young man since he was 13. And I'm glad that he's in Jamaican colors and not the United States colors, because this man right here could have been an American international. That's how talented Ashton is. Now, I want to see what he's able to do in Konkriyev to ensure that he can put this into the back of the net on a consistent basis. That will be important. The number nine is now the target man. Bell is the number 10. Yep, Bell is the number 10. Yeah, man. Bell is the number 10. I know. Yeah, man. Bell is the number 10. I know. The, the numbers that you see here doesn't match their jersey number. The numbers that you see here, Teddy Ligri, they don't match the jersey number. All right? The names indicate where they are on the field, but the numbers here, they don't match the jersey number. I didn't put it in that vein. All right? So... That's what we should bear in mind here. But Irene Watson, ironically, does wear the number nine jersey. Malachi Molina does wear the number two jersey, ironically. You know, I hear Dixon does wear the number five. But Adrian Reed wears a six. Alizeva Gooden wears the four. And so on and so forth. All right? Jordan Mangatel wears 14, etc., etc. So, with that being said, folks... Ashton is the best finisher in the team. And I know the goal scoring responsibility will lie on him from this standpoint, but he can also do what we've seen Nick Simmons do as well. He can hold a ball and Jamani Bell finds space in between, in behind, lay off, 
Jamani, one on one with the goalkeeper, and boom, back of the net. That is something that we can also see as well. Something that we can also play. Did Ashton play the first game? No, Ashton did not play the first game, Jason Guna. He did not play the first game at all. Lynch started the first game. National Boat Barrett, I hear Dixon, Alexavia Gooden, Malachi Molina, Adrian Reed, Ronaldo Barrett, Dustin Cohen, Jordan Mangatal, Jamani Bell, Nicholas Simmons. They started the first game. And the persons that came on the second half, of course, Irene Watson, the goal scorer, he came on. Brandon Bent came on the field as well. Dylan John came on. Jason White came on. Malik Robinson and Adrian Mahoney. Those were the individuals that came on for the Jamaicans in this game. So I do expect Ashton Gordon to lead the line in the second game. He didn't get an opportunity to play within the first game, but I do expect him to the other games. And he's not the only player that didn't get to play the first game as well. Che Daniel Garda didn't play yesterday as well. As you know, the, the backup goalkeepers, well, Joshua Grant, who is traveling, didn't play. Samir Bloss, who was not traveling, of course, he didn't play as well. Odin Wilberforce did not play. So quite a few others did not play. All right, Teddy Ligri, are you saying that in terms of squad numbers? Or are you saying that in terms of the numbers that you see here on the screen? Um, I'm assuming you mean in here on the screen. All right, let's map them out so that you guys can be able to see it. So Teddy Ligri says number one, which is the goalkeeper. Yes, Tawain Lynch is an important component to this Jamaican team. Absolutely. <clears throat> he will be very, very important. Very, 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 very important to Jamaica, for sure. So he is going to need to be a rock for Jamaica, <clears throat> and most likely will play every single minute for Jamaica throughout the course of the qualifiers itself. So Lee Gray also said number two, All right? Yes, Wilberforce is part of the reserve four, yes. But it, just because you're part of the reserves, it doesn't mean that you can't take the field. You can take the field. And the, the four reserves are still training with the team. How left back bolt number 11 look? All right. So from the game against Trinidad and Tobago, defensively, he was good. Moving forward, though, I had my concerns. And that's where Brandon Bent, for me, has the advantage. Brandon Bent going forward has the, the, the slight advantage in terms of, be, of the, the efficiency of that aspect. But Nash and Bolt Barrett, Brandon Bent, for me, at the end of the day, it could be a flip of the coin depending on the circumstances and the requirements on the day, on the given day. But Bolt and, 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 and Bent, two, two solid players on the left-hand side uh, the Jamaicans can call upon. If we're going to stick with this 3-4-3, three, three, yeah, Brendan Bent would be a good option to, to work with. Bolt Barrett, I expect him to feature at some point within the tournament as well. It wouldn't surprise me to see if Bolt and Bent shared minutes throughout the course of the competition. Number two are the, is another key player. Number two on this list is... Malachi Molina, yep, critical at Dallas, very, very much so. Four, Adrian Reed, yep, you're right. Can also play in midfield as well. Number five, I hear Dixon, yep, the captain and integral force to the team. Number six, Alex Xavier Gooden, indeed. Six, eight, and ten. Jordan Mangatal, yes. And I, and I explained the reason with, with Jordan Mangatal as well in terms of the midfield aspect. Even when you look at the Jamaican team when they are have attacking corners and the ball is headed out by the opposition, Jordan is always at the edge of the box, ready to strike. And this is evident also against Trinidad and Tobago as well, where he was going for glory as well. Sometimes it went over the bar, but still, he's also another attacking option there. But yeah, in the middle of the park, he's quite aware of his specific responsibilities. Andrew 55, if the GFF is streaming, I think you mean is, is the GFF streaming the game tomorrow? Tomorrow at Stets, not that I am aware of. No, not that I am aware of, to be quite frank with you. I don't see it, to be quite frank with you. So 
that's the reality of the situation, you know? So. Ronaldo Bart is eight. On my thing, Ronaldo Bart is Jordan Mangatel. Jordan Mangatel on my screen here. But in terms of the actual number that they have on the back of their jersey, Ronaldo Bart is number eight. Yes. Ronaldo Bart wears the number eight for Jamaica. Yes. Simon, so if the Jeff have not showing the game live, please tell them allow person to stream the damn game so we can see it. Because I never heard of Jeff F. Bunny in live streaming. Andrew, I'm not sure if you saw the press conference from uh Marin Gordon. Marin Gordon's first press conference. The video is right here on this platform, Andrew, where Marin Gordon says that he wants none of the friendlies of the of the team to be streamed. And yesterday I spoke about the challenges of this, and there are a number of reasons why. One is not to give away the strengths and weaknesses. The second aspect is <clears throat> because what lies ahead. The United States and, and Canada have requested video footage from Jamaica in relation to their game against Trinidad as they want to scout Jamaica because potentially Canada could face Jamaica within the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. If Jamaica tops their group, beats Puerto Rico, then it's Canada within the last eight. So that's something to, to bear in mind. If Jamaica finishes second in their group and beats Guatemala... Then it's the United States in the round, in, in the last eight, you know. So the United States and Canada, they're doing their homework. And also Canada and the United States are in the same group as Trinidad and Tobago as well. So they are very, very much aware and, and doing their necessary preparation to ensure that everything happens. But yeah, uh, duly noted with everything, you know. So yeah. So that's the reality of the situation, folks. So hopefully you guys get the full drift of of everything, you know. So yeah, Joshua Grant, Tewain Lynch, Samir Bloss, the three goalkeepers, but it's actually Tewain Lynch of Mount Pleasant Academy Football Club, and. Uh, Joshua Grant, those are the two goalkeepers that will be traveling. That will be traveling to Guatemala. And the Jamaicans got a visa waiver for this. So it's a good look. Yeah, it's, it's a good look for sure, you know. So very, very delighted about this, you know. Which centre back was injured? So Dixon played throughout. So did Adrian Reed. So Alexavier Gooden. So yeah. So that's the situation there. In terms of those that took the field, Teddy Lee Gray, Brandon Bent, Dylan John. Took the field as well. Jason White, Malik Robinson, Adrian Mahoney, out of Toronto FC. XYZ bartender says, seriously, this time, you do not need to streamline to get footage. You don't need to streamline to get footage. Mm, well, the United States. Um, the third thing that has been said from the, the standpoint of the coaching staff is that the if you want as well the top teams in the region the mexicas the united states the canadas you will not find games of them you'll not find games of them so yeah especially this calendar year yeah you won't trinidad and tobago as we made mention earlier dominic wilson we are Cardenas, Seth Hadid, available for selection. Michael Chavez, 
also as well. There's only one yellow card in the first game, you know. Yeah. And that was Josiah Ochoa. The only one. <laughs> yeah. From that game in particular. The only, only one. So, yep, folks, that's what we can bear in mind for sure, you know. I read Junior now playing center back. Yes, he would have been playing midfield. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. It's not that he can't play. Def it's not that he's a worse in defense. He can operate in both positions. So, yes, totally agree. You've hit the nail right on the head with that point. Absolutely. So you're you're spot on with that. For sure. 100%. 150% spot on with that point in particular. So yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Adrian Reed, I hear Dixon, Alex Xavier Gooden, Tawain Lynch, Adrian Mahoney, Jordan Mangatal, Brandon Bent, Malachi Molina, Puerto Rican father, Jamaican mom, Ashton Gordon. Jamani Bell, Orion Watson. It's funny, as Brandon Bent's parents are from St. Elizabeth, and the game tomorrow will also be in St. Elizabeth as well. So it could be a nostalgic moment for Brandon Bent in particular for this game. Malachi Molina, Jamaican mom, Puerto Rican dad. I have a feeling that we can qualify. If we finish third, who we face? Okay, so if Jamaica finishes third, then Jamaica will likely face Panama in the round of 16, and then Honduras in the quarterfinals. Because let me show you to the degree. If Jamaica finishes third in the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship, that means that they'll play the second place team from the group that I was referring to, Panama's group. And Panama's group is Mexico, Panama, Guatemala, Curacao. The third place team, Jamaica, playing the second place team in group E. Second place team in group E, I don't expect it to Mexico. I expect it to be Panama. So maybe Jamaica versus Panama in the round of 16. And Jamaica is able to get the better of Panama, then it would mean a clash against Honduras in the quarterfinals. So, yeah. With top in the group is the, you could say this, is it the smoothest passage? Or finishing third where you have Panama and Honduras? Or you rather face Puerto Rico and Canada? You know? So that's something for us to, to consider from that standpoint. So, yeah. Panama won't be a walkover, though. It, they won't. They won't. Absolutely. They absolutely will not be a walkover. And at any level, especially in men's football, Panama have never been a walkover for Jamaica. And there's a reason why Jamaica has not beaten them often. In my lifetime, Jamaica has only defeated Panama twice at the senior level. 2009 and 2019. 2009, Kemar Dada Daily last minute against Panama in a 3-2 win. And 2019 it needed a Darren Mattox penalty. Apart from that, I've seen draws, we've seen losses, you know. Panama uh, is, is Jamaica's, you could say, it's always been a thorn in Jamaica's stomach, you know. They are, they always have Jamaica's ticket, Panama. Yeah. Always, you know. Jamaica's bogey team. If the coach played 4-4-2, four, four, 
Reed Jr. could play a right midfield and Ben's left midfield with Dixon and and good not the back. Hmm. Four four two. You could have him in midfield. Adrian Reed on the right. And you could have that here. Malika Malina there. Four four two, which means no. You could have Bolt, Barrett, and you could have Bent to have the four four two. So that could work. Yeah. No joke either. For me, if they cannot win the group, that suggests that they are not good. Panama better prepared. Yes, man. Yes, man, to the league, Ray. Coming back from 2011. Remember, you know, when Jamaica last qualified for the under-17 World Cup, Panama defeated Jamaica in the third-place playoff with Roberta Chen and them players there. And, and Panama in that squad had six players of Jamaican heritage that were born to Jamaican par grandparents or great-grandparents in that squad. Yeah, man, Panama, Panama got two under-17 World Cup. Panama has been to two under-17 World Cups. 2011, the same one where Jamaica went to. And also, as well, they qualified for the under-17 World Cup in 2013 as well. In 2011, you know, remember, they went to the round of 16. Remember that? The same time with Omar Wolness and, and that crew. Yep, Panama went to the round of 16. They beat Burkina Faso 1-0. They lost to Ecuador. I lost to Germany, but based on goal difference and the best third place team, Panama advanced the round of 16. They took on Mexico and they fell 2 0. They're nuts, which is why. And, and, and here's the thing, too, to the league. If Jamaica finishes second in the group, Jamaica would face Guatemala in the round of 16. Guatemala is the host nation. So, what does that tell you? 20, 30,000 fans within the stadium right now. 12th man has Guatemala. And if Jamaica is able to get the better of Guatemala, that means a clash against Mexico. Not, not Mexico, sorry, the United States in the quarterfinals. You know? So that tells us everything. Jamaica, Panama, and TNT qualified twice for the 17 World Cup. Yes, sir. Trinidad 2001 and... That's right, 2007. But the thing is, though, Teddy Lee Gray, technically, technically Trinidad and Tobago qualified once for the Under-17 World Cup because in 2001, they were the host nation, so they didn't qualify. They, they were just automatic because they hosted the tournament. So technically, Trinidad and Tobago has only qualified once for the Under-17 World Cup, but have played in two Under-17 World Cups. In 2001, they were the host nation, so they didn't have to go through a qualification system for that. I remember that too. They took on they took on Croatia, they lost 2-1. That was a game where Nico Crenshaw scored a period of penalties. They lost 1-0 to Australia. And then they took on Brazil at the Hazley Crawford Stadium and lose 6-1 to, to Brazil. And this was a Brazil squad that had some decent players as well. So yeah, quite a squad I tell you. Quite a compelling squad. Yeah, and this tournament, France went on to, to win this under-17 World Cup. If he did Nigeria in the final. Quite a tournament it was. Interesting one. Trinidad hosting the under-17 World Cup. And there was a lot of excitement around it. All these matchups are assuming you know how other groups go. So let's wait until a few match results happen to start map out the teams. Well, Jason, if if things ma match out to how it will be, then this is how it will go. That's the reality, Jason. Are you going to optimistically say that Jamaica is going to play Curacao if Jamaica finishes third in their group? You're not going to tell yourself that Jamaica is going to play Curacao. You're not. If you look at how it is expected to go, then this is the situation. Yes, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll translate to this, but this is the most likely scenarios. 
Guatemala never qualified. Well, you know, it's really great. They qualified for under 20 World Cups, you know. Yep, and I even went to the round of 16 of an under 20 World Cup. But yeah, Guatemala has never been to an under 17 or even a senior team World Cup. You know, <clears throat> not even a senior team World Cup Guatemala has ever qualified for. You know what I'm saying? Mexico, well, the United States have been to 17 under 17 World Cups. Mexico, 14. Costa Rica, 10. Canada, 7. Honduras, 5. Panama has been to 2. Haiti has been to 2. Jamaica has been to 2. And Cuba has been to 2. Trinidad, of course, has been to 2 as well. But yeah. I know you guys might be saying, Simon, when did Cuba go to an under-17 World Cup? Twice, 1989 and 1991. <clears throat> so that's when Cuba went to under-17 World Cup. So they've been to an under-17 World Cup twice. 1989 in Scotland and 1991 in Italy. They didn't win any games at those tournaments, but... But what Cuba did do, though, was draw with Ghana in 1989. 1991, which was, of course, was back-to-back -back qualifications. Cuba were in a tough group. They fell to Ghana 2-1, Spain 7-2, and Uruguay 1-0. So, yeah. That's that, folks. <clears throat> and Cuba has been to one under 20 World Cup, which was in Turkey. So, yeah, they lost South Korea 2 1, Nigeria 3 0, Portugal 5 0. Yeah, that's the road, that's the history of it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. Quite a journey, I tell you. Yes, remember Teddy Ligre 2013 was the year of Junior Flemings, Luca Levy, Rafik Bryan, that era. That Martin Davis, that was that under 17 squad. Jamaica were leading 1 0, and Panama scored later on in the game. And Jamaica drew 2-2 with Barbados in the second game. Of course, after that as well, Jamaica took on Canada in the quarterfinals. Jamaica took a 1-0 lead, and took a 2-1 lead, but then Canada won 4-2, and Canada qualified for the, the World Cup. So, yeah. yeah. So that is what we can say there, folks. Why aren't they streaming the games? CONCACAF, CONCACAF should be streaming the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. We just need to find out if CONCACAF is going to do it on their YouTube channel for the CONCACAF Under-17 Championship. Marin Gordon must have some innovative tactics. Can't wait to see them on the 12th, says Jason Guna. <laughs> okay. It's amazing how time flies, you know, because the 12th is next, is Sunday coming. Yeah. Yeah, Sunday coming, right? Man, time flies so quickly. Yeah, I'm going to go for the championship. Yeah. Tick wins, you know. Time is flies. Yeah. Sunday, 5 o'clock. Hmm. Yeah, it's something I tell you. Really, really something. Definitely something to look forward to. So, yep, Sunday, February 12th, 5 o'clock Jamaica time, Jamaica versus Cuba. And then on Tuesday, 5 o'clock, Guadeloupe versus Jamaica. 
And Thursday at 8 o'clock, Costa Rica against Jamaica. That's what next week has in store. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Let's see, right? These two countries are always better prepared, having their players in camp way ahead of us, of too often scrambling. Well, bartender, as I've said on numerous occasions, it's no surprise Jamaica's under-17 teams in 1999 and 2011 qualified for the World Cup because, guess what? They were in camp for months, and the team in 2011 went to Brazil. All right? So they had a lot of time together. Whole lot of time together. You understand me? Plenty, 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 plenty time. Whole heap of time. So it's no surprise at all. Aaron Gordon says, go hide that game. Be he hiding. On the twelfth, on the twelfth is Jamaica Cuba, five o'clock Jamaica time. Galactus says, "Big up everyone." So Galactus says, "Zach Lovelace and Cole greatly missed." Yeah, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. But folks, Cameron Newbank is is doing his part to get fit. You know, he sent me a video today in terms of. The progress and how he is doing, getting ready for injury. Yeah, he's getting there. Yeah, he's getting back to his best. But yeah, Cuba is, I mean, Cameron, I should say, is definitely showing some great, 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 great improvements to his progress. So let's give it a bit of time and It'll certainly fall into place. Big up on Clay. Hope you're doing well. True culture. Big up always coming to we fans wondering what magic this under-17 coach got for this championship. Can't wait to see the games, though. <laughs> yeah, the games should be fun, right? It's, it's massive because you know the situation already. Cuba, Guadeloupe, Costa Rica. Top three teams advance to the round of 16 of the competition. So that in itself tells everything. And then from the round of 16, that is where you can start saying, hmm, what's going to happen here? You know? So definitely something to process. So, yeah. Yep. So, we'll see how everything goes. But definitely, it's an exciting time to look forward to. So, we'll see. We'll see how everything goes. Give it time. And we'll see how everything opens up so it should be a good look why we keep doing the same thing oh well xyz bartender i've i've repeated it many times that it's it's about ensuring that the preparation is is, is higher and better than it is right now you know it's, it's, at the end of the day, it comes down to cost and funding and everything of that nature, which is why the same level and intensity of preparation was not repeated. When will the players start wearing the new jerseys? They should for their for the games in the Nations League. Let me put a press release on the screen so that you guys can read the details of the the Adidas launch and what what is to what lies ahead. So 
I'm going to put the put it on the screen now so that you guys are aware of it. <clears throat> and then we take it from there. All right, let's go into it right now. I'm bringing up the, the release, guys, so that you guys can read it and be acquainted of the contents of it and everything. All right, cool. It's opening up right now. Okay, bam, here we go now. There we go. All right. Here we go. Okay, in partnership with JFF, Adidas reveals the first collection under the four-year deal, which was designed by Grace Wallabana, woven with the style and spirit of Jamaican culture. The four-piece apparel range include home and away jerseys, a pre-match jersey and an anthem jacket. Crafted for the Reggae Boys men's team and Reggae Girls women's team, the collection is available for purchase at adidas.com and select Adidas stores and retailers. Today, Adidas kicks off its partnership with the Jamaican Football Federation with a bold and exciting collaboration with acclaimed designer Grace Wales Bonner, featuring the new home and away kits for the Reggae Boys men's team and Reggae Girls women's team. The three partners have united with a shared ambition to celebrate the powerful relationship between Jamaican culture and football with a collection that transcends the sport, creating the ultimate fusion of football culture and fashion yeah on the 17 won't be able to wear it we'll see my friend i am just not sure the versatile four-piece collection also features a pre-match jersey and an anthem jacket inviting fans from different cultures backgrounds and generations into the celebration of jamaican football community inspired by jamaican style and culture the range sports a mix of classic adidas silhouettes and elegant Wales Bonner signatures, offering a collection fit for the pitch alongside streetwear staples to be sported off of it. All right. Reggae Boys and Reggae Girls product details. Home jersey. The striking new Jamaica home jersey features the country's rich national colors of black, gold, and green. The energy of the island is accentuated by fine paint strips, detail that decorate the shirt, echoing the subtle groove of Jamaican music and style a woven team badge on the chest and Wales bonus sign off on the back neck complete the eye catching look. The away jersey, we're aware of how it looks and persons have given their thoughts about it online as well. Pre match jersey and anthem jacket. If you guys haven't already, you would have seen already the, the video that I posted not too long ago of the launch in London. So you guys can watch that video and let us know your thoughts about it as our president michael ricketts had to say out of an exciting year for our reggae boys and reggae girls teams we're incredibly proud to unveil these very exciting team kits and sportswear I believe these designs captures the essence of jamaican culture as it is not only represents jamaican football but through the mixture of the distinctive jamaican colors and the designs highlights the greatest part of our world renowned jamaican culture we can't wait to see jamaican fans and players alike wearing the kits with pride on the world's biggest sporting stages as they cheer on the reggae boys and girls with a bold ambition to further develop the opportunities for girls and boys to play grassroots football at home in jamaica this one marks the start of what we are certain will be an incredibly important partnership to inspire future reggae girls and reggae boys all right the coming year is hugely important for both Jamaican football teams with the reggae girls competing in their in the World Cup and the reggae boys continue a successful run and form in their Conquered Nations League campaign. Both jerseys are a fitting homage to modern Jamaica that aims to empower fans to support them both home and away. Right. All right. So the jerseys, 90 euros for the home and away jerseys and 110 euros for the anthem jacket. So if you want to buy the reggae boys jersey, it's 90 90 euros all right so 90 euros yeah 
So Jason Guna, I didn't say anything in relation to the under 17s, to be honest with you. So that's what I'll say there. I'm not sure anything about the under 17s. We'll see. But it's basically not an option, you know? So not an option at all. So yeah. A lot of excitement around it, so we'll see. My prediction for the game tomorrow, Jamaica on the 17 versus Trinidad and Tobago on the 17. I'm going to go with Jamaica. Two. Trinidad and Tobago. Nil. The pre-match jerseys are slightly cheaper. Yeah, that is correct. That is correct. 90 euros, so... 15, 16,000 Jamaican, 14,000 Jamaican. Yeah. yeah, you could say along those lines, right? Yep, today in London was the JFF official kit launch. So yeah, guys, we'll keep you all updated as to everything for tomorrow and how everything transpires. Thanks, guys, for your support. Really, really appreciate it. Very, very close to 16. That's right. Very, very close to 16,000 subscribers. Come on, guys. Smash the like button. Very, very close. Next month is a seven year anniversary of RBC. And as you know, after that, we're going to be talking about 20K, 15K, you know? So, a lot to look forward to. Really, really a lot to look forward to. So, So a long journey ahead, guys. Let's hear what you guys have to say. Smash the like button. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to Reggae Boys Commentary for more content. Later, guys. More content to come tomorrow. This video is brought to you by Andy Gone Nuts. 100% guaranteed fresh coconut water delivered straight to your door. Call 876 876- 309-6128. That's 876-309-6128. Refreshing and affordable. For more information, follow them on Instagram at Andy Gone Nuts. Mm, truly refreshing. And Crumble by Mrs. C. Old English fudge and other delectable sweet treats. Call or WhatsApp 876-586-0471. That's 876-586-0471.